Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I will show you the easiest way to put an image onto a cup. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also in case you're wondering where can you get these files that I'm working on for learning purposes, well actually as a patron you get my affinity photo file with all the layers so you can see exactly what I have done. All right, so let's remove the picture here and we start out with the image of a cup. And don't, this is the first important trick, don't apply the image while the cup is rotated. Instead, what you want to do is to rotate the image so the cup is upright. This will make your job a lot easier. And to see if it's actually upright, we can draw out some guidelines here for the sides. You can see the side of the cup over here is not completely straight. Over here it's a little bit more straight. Well, this of course has to do with perspective. By the way, if you don't see these rules on the side, what you want to go is to go to view and then show rulers. So you get these two rulers, one here and one up here. Don't worry about that. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I want to have another guideline right in the middle of my cup like so, just so I have a little bit more control over what is actually going on. All right, so the next thing that we need is of course an image. Here I have an image of my cute cat Max and he of course wants to wish you a happy holidays, happy Christmas, stay safe, stay at home and have a good time maybe with your family, maybe with your pets. Okay, so here we have our cute picture. You can take any kind of picture you want in any kind of ratio you want. And I want to resize this, of course, so it fits onto my cup like so. And you can see this guideline helps me to snap this a little bit more to the middle of my image. All right, so the next thing and here is the super easy trick to help you achieve this without understanding perspective and all these kind of complicated things. Download a grid from the internet. That is my trick for you that makes it extremely easy to apply this in a correct way. Again, resize this correctly. I will have a link in the video description that shows you where you can download this grid for free. Okay, and so the next thing we want to do here is you see here where this goes down, bends here and then bends to the other side again. So this is the peak here. We want to have this at the peak here. You can even make this to into the blend mode multiply so you can see what's going on below our grid. And um, let's actually stretch this out here. I will zoom out a little bit so I have this middle handle. I will stretch this out to the other side. Don't worry about this being no squares anymore. This doesn't matter at all to us um, in here while we we'll do this. So let's, this is actually good enough. It doesn't have to be super perfect. Don't worry about that. Okay, so we have lined this up up here. I'm gonna do, do the same thing down here. So let's pull this up. Uh, you can see, you can see exactly here where we have this straight line, the edge of the cup, and then we start to see the round part of the bottom. So this is where we want to go. You can actually grab another guideline and set it like right here if you want to. And then we pull this down and it sits here perfectly on the other side too. I'm happy with that. Let's go on and have some fun. All right, so what are we going to do with that? Well. We're going to grab our warp tool over here, mesh warp that is. So there are two modes in here. That's important to understand. There is mesh warp and there's perspective tool. Don't use the perspective tool, use the mesh warp tool. All right, so click that and this will rasterize your grid. So that's okay, don't worry about that. And then we can grab this middle part here and just drag it down. You can see, and again, this guide helps me a little bit by telling me where my mouse is so I don't move it left or right too much. I keep it in the middle. And you can see these sides, they are not lining up. So that's not perfect yet. So what we want to do here is to click on these handles on the side and this will give us these little handles that are sticking out here. A little bit hard to see maybe, but look for them. They are there. All right. So um, take this and then 
move this over here a little bit, uh, maybe like so. What you want to do is to follow this line here. Here it is a little bit hard to see, but um, just try to get it right. So we go over to the other side. Let's zoom out here a little bit. Go over to the other side, try to match this up like so. And then again, go over here to try to line this up. So that starts to look better. Let's go over here again. And you want to have, you want to really follow this bend here. Don't worry too much if these lines down there are straight or not. That is not our main concern. So this looks pretty good. All right, let's go down here, do the same thing. I will pull this out and then I will grab these side handles. You can see here actually that our edge, our corner is not lining up with the cup. So now we can actually move this over here. And then again, we can actually do the same thing on the other side. Let's see, a little bit hard to see here. Actually, this is kind of in the right position. So it's good for us. And then again, grab this, move this down here. And this is just a matter of moving these handles around until it fits as well as possible or as well as you feel like, to be honest, like, as I said, doesn't have to be super perfect. Um, nobody's gonna police you on that, right? Okay, so now that we have done that, we can click on apply and you can see we have these wonderful lines, a lot of them, and we can now use these lines as guides. This is why we created them. So we are going to do the same thing with our cat photo. Make sure it's on the right height from the edges. That's pretty important here from the corners. And then you want to click on mesh warp and basically do the same thing. Now here is one thing you need to look out for. You have these lines here. So make sure that the starting line and the finishing line are the same. And of course, it's kind of easy to find to figure that out because you are trying to create a line here that follows that. So you would kind of see if this jumps off the line, right? Okay, so just grab this here and then again, uh, move this over maybe a little bit and then move this over here a little bit like so, um, just so it follows the line closely. This is a little bit easier than up here because we don't have these extreme bends around completely the corner, the horizon, so to speak, of your coffee cup, right? Okay, um, let's see. So this is moving down here. Um, we can actually move this over here a little bit like so, and then Let's see where this connects. I will pull this down just to see where this line goes. It goes over here. So this is actually that line. You can see this line here. So we want to pull this up a little bit, as you can see. Pretty good, all right. And then handles, move your handles, everybody. There we go, looking good. I think we have a winner here. Let's see, um, I don't think this is, ah, okay. This is up here, so we almost got tricked into using the wrong line. Um, let's move this over here a little bit and then move this over here a little bit. And that should be good, I guess. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, click on apply and then we can hide our grid like so. And you can see we have basically put the cat onto our cup, but don't go yet, there are more steps to go through. One thing I like to do at this position is maybe stretch this a little bit upwards, just a tiny bit, because it gets skewed a little bit sometimes. Um, and then of course, as you can see here on our cup, we have these reflections. We want to have them on the cup, of course. So what we are going to do is hold the control key and click on your cat image or whatever kind of image you're using, of course. And this creates a selection as you can see, but we need to make the selection a little bit bigger. So go to select and then go to grow and shrink. Hold your mouse over the number, don't click, hold your mouse over the number, use your mouse wheel and then just enhance, like, like grow it a little bit. You can see here now the selection is bigger than our image. This looks fine. Click on apply and then go down to your background image. So select the background image as you can see here. Control C like Caesar to copy and V like Venus, so control V 
to put this in here. So you can, can see now we have created a copy of that. Control D, like uh, dromedar to deselect. And then I want to move this on top of my cat image. Okay, so what are the next steps to make this believable as a reflection? Well, we are not going to use a blend mode for this. Instead, what we're going to do is to click here on this little cogwheel on the side, blend ranges, and then move the source layer, not the underlying composition layer, the source layer. You want to move this down here like so, and then you want to click somewhere in here and move this down until you feel happy with it. Don't worry about this looking grungy, um, like not good over here. Don't worry about that. We're going to fix that in a second. So what you want to do here is just make sure that you see this kind of reflection here in a nice way and everything looks good. OK, so that is pretty OK. Good. Now we want to blur this. Here is a trick. Secret sauce, really important. Don't use effects Gaussian blur, that doesn't work. Don't use live filter Gaussian blur, doesn't work. What you have to do is to put this in a group. So select this layer that you've created and then control and G like garden uh, to create a group of that. And now if you use your effects Gaussian blur, you can see that you can blur this and make it soft. Don't go too hard because you can see it starts to get soft over here. Doesn't That's not a good idea. Just a little bit like so. That's already good enough. You can also, let's see. No, don't don't use preserve alpha. Um, that is good enough. OK, perfect. So we are almost done, but there are some more important steps to follow. So don't go yet again. OK. So select this group that you have created and also the cat layer or the photo layer and put both of them into a group. This is very important. Another secret sauce here. So control G like garden again. This is now a group. Now we can rotate out and here is the secret sauce. Really important. Drag this onto your background where the image with the cup is. Why? Because now I can rotate the image of the cup pack back to the original position and the image of the cat will rotate with it. Look like look at that. Um, we're going to press shift on our keyboard and hold it and then use our rotation. So this will snap to zero again and you can see perfect. Good. Here are some extra steps we still need to do. First of all, let's hide the guide so we can actually see what's going on here. Then open up this group and put in there an adjustment for um, for contrast. Actually, where is it? There, brightness and contrast. So pull this into the group like so on top of your uh, reflection group basically here uh, or highlight group, whatever you want to call that and the image and then just uh, push up the contrast a little bit. Not too much uh, like so that looks good. Maybe reduce the brightness a little bit. This is up to taste. So just like you want this to be just so it feels good. OK, and here's another important thing. Although we have done this correctly perspectively and it looks great, I often feel that it helps to adjust this a little bit to your feeling, to the taste of how it feels more real. So often what you can do is like, for example, let's rotate this a little bit more and then maybe with the keys move it up a little bit to the top and to the left like so. So just it for some reason, this is not correct, but it feels better to look at it. So yeah, this is how you do that. Super easy, a little bit many steps, but pretty awesome still. So thank you very much for watching. I wish you happy holidays and happy Christmas and have a good time. Don't fight with your family. Try to share love and happiness and positivity, especially in these uh, challenging times. Be safe and have fun. Bye.